<laughs> the following audio was recovered from a hard drive found in a burned out storage locker near Seattle, Washington. The owner could not be found. Alright, before this sickness takes hold of me completely, here are some new notes for number 84, my bats day wrap up. Communing with the goths at the happiest place on earth. The episode in which I remind everyone that I'm not completely antisocial, and also go to theme parks like the normal people, in between weekend camping at Yield Abandoned Factory or hallucinating nonsense in my closet. <clears throat> so, my initial reaction, as is now tradition when I travel, is holy crap is it bright in Southern California. Living up north for so long has made me forget the true face of the sun, and once my vision adjusted, it was very clear that I was not the only one realizing this tactical flaw. Honestly, it was an endearing bonding moment, as so many of my fellow park goers collectively overheated in layered blacks while struggling for their smoked lenses and parasols. <clears throat> Once I regained my composure, I dived right into the black market set up outside the park gates, with its many stalls of spooky handcrafted goods, including these fun wood-carved animal tokens that I ended up buying, and I still need to take photos up for the website. The market hall was already a squeeze, but at least there was some half-hearted air conditioning, and... Like the voyeur I am, that all just means that this was the best place to people watch. I kept hearing variations of, everyone here is so much prettier than me, so often that that statement truly became a mathematical fallacy. Because seriously, these people really put their all into the day, despite the radiation hazard outside. The entire crowd had this universal feeling of being simultaneously thrilled and panicked. But several strategically placed benches outside seem to be there exclusively so that a person can melt down in comfortable privacy, so at least Disney knew their audience. And maybe that's the thing about Bats Day. It's a reminder that we weirdos are a lot closer to whatever normal is than we tell ourselves. Or maybe that being normal is about trying really hard to act like whatever one thinks normal should be. Until one just gives up from the exhaustion of it all and just dresses up like a favorite cartoon where everything just makes sense. <sighs> something. I don't know. All that, one bottle of water, several new totems, and a wacky goth sombrero later, I entered the park. Now, my original plan was to do a sort of expose on all the various deaths and accidents that have taken place at Disneyland, despite the mouse insisting that it isn't allowed. Real punk rock stuff. But, despite the rapper, as I walked down Main Street, I realized that it wasn't really the goth thing to do. It would be a crass desecration of those that have come before, or something like that. So, my hook now gone, and my research wasted, I headed straight to the Haunted Mansion hoping to beat the rush. Before this trip, I've been to Disneyland once in my life when I was pretty young, and despite the obvious panderings to its more modern franchises, the place still seems to exist somewhere outside of time. Step inside Space Mountain, and you can just as likely emerge in some completely new paradigm or occasionally stay trapped in there forever, as my research has proven. That's goth. The need to just completely step off into a shadow in order to live your best life, whenever or wherever you may be able to find it. Of course, I did not beat the rush. The Haunted Mansion was literally why everyone was here, and I was not going to get past the 999 ghosts queuing up to check in anytime soon. So instead I turned to Tomorrowland. I wanted to test my theory about Space Mountain. And shockingly, this ride was actually approachable, considering it's the darkest shadow in the park. Once I'm strapped into the rocket train, and launched into the extremely poorly lit starscape inside Disney's White Tower, tight spirals create a centrifugal force that makes it even harder to see, and I quickly lose my own train of thought and sense of direction. I simply cease to exist for the several minutes it takes to complete the track. Then, stepping off, the whole world slams back into my brain and the glare of the sun locks me back into this world. It's like the complete Disneyland experience. Probably some fragment of me is still in there, along with billions of other riders from its over 60 years of operation. Anyway, some other stuff happens after that. I met some really interesting people at the parade that I may contact for a future episode, but my mind keeps drifting back to those minutes of nothingness. There was something familiar in the flitting shadows that surrounded me. Half-formed faces, Definitely not ghosts, because only one person officially died there. Probably just the effects of an anxious, understimulated brain. But I was one of those faces. All of us merging together into a giant primal scream. I guess this is why I don't get out much. 
Oh, also, almost forgot. That guy that cosplayed as Jack Nicholson in the Big Castle group shot? Perfect. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation and we hope you'll subscribe for more creepy content.